I was so dizzy and had no energy that I would have to crawl from my bedroom to the kitchen, to the bathroom. There was actually a point where I didn't leave my house for three months because I was just that sick. It was hard because you don't know what's going on, you don't know what's wrong. At what point do you start looking into other causes? As a mother, you know, when your kids are sick, your heart always breaks. There's just nothing you can do to make it any better. I felt that there was no hope at that point in my life. Welcome to The Incurables. I'm Don Wildman. Lena Wolf was a happy girl from the Midwest, living a relatively normal life. Many considered her an exceptional young lady with great ambition and a gift for recognizing the benefits of hard work and dedication. She was always busy and enjoyed staying physically active. Then, suddenly, the vivacious teenager who couldn't wait to get to her next dance class wasn't able to get out of bed. Without explanation, Lena was overcome with debilitating fatigue. This was not simply the oft-seen rebellion of an overtaxed youngster. She literally could not lift her head from her pillow. Lena's parents were distraught about what was happening to their daughter, and Lena was terrified at what her life had become. I had to pull out of school because I was unable to stand up enough to actually go to school. The hardest thing was to see her sleeping her life away. And not because she wanted to, but because she physically couldn't even get up. I felt really sheltered and depressed, um, really isolated from the world, from my friends. I felt hopeless, like she was never going to get off the couch. She was never going to have a life that, um, you know, what was I going to do 30 years from now and she's still laying on the couch? How am I going to take care of her? I think it really hurt as far as the friends because they don't understand what's going on because you hardly understand what's going on. So they just kind of figure it's easier just not to be your friend. Every time you get some little piece of information, you know, it's just like, okay, let's run with this and see what this does. And then your hopes just get dashed as it's not the answer and she's awake even less and talking even less and not bubbly and not dancing. I couldn't fight for myself, so it really came down to my parents to fight for me. Fortunately, the Wolves already had a strong support system in place. Kenny and Cindy were raising their three kids in Cleveland, and they had always been a tight-knit family. Her little sister idolized Lena, who aspired to become a prima ballerina. I took ballet from the time of kindergarten all the way through high school. It was run here, run there, run there. She was in ballet twice a week. She did not only regular ballet, but also classical ballet. She loved to dance, and she loved to be outside playing. But during the eighth grade, Lena began to sense that things just weren't right. She wasn't her normal exuberant self. We didn't notice Lena's problems immediately because it was something that kind of came over time. Every once in a while, I would faint for no real true reason. I think we just kind of blew it off as, you know, stress or I was getting a cold and that maybe I was just a little bit too much of a nervous person in general. It was just something that was very, very sporadic. And then it just started becoming a real problem when I got into high school. She was passing out way too much. Normal people just don't pass out, you know, once a week. I had a lot of mental fog, dizzy, bl blacking out, or, you know, losing your field of vision, um, getting like tunnel vision, go from sitting to stand, getting woozy. She would actually have a seizure when she would pass out. Um, but it was not grand mal, it was just, you know, she would get stiff and her eyes would roll back in her head. And so we went to the doctor hoping to find out why she was passing out so much. My family physician generally contributed it from just due to growing up. It was just hard because they didn't have an answer for me of why I fainted. Lena's doctors couldn't identify anything wrong with her the dizziness and fainting episodes only increased, resulting in cruel gossip at Lena's school. 
There was a lot of rumors went around that I was just skipping or I was dropping out. At one point, you know, the high school even thought that she was on drugs. But you have a straight A student here who's ultra conservative and it's like, you know, you're way off base. The fainting and the missing school definitely started affecting my class work. It was very hard and embarrassing and nerve wracking. I actually fainted in my biology class. It was very, um, very awkward, I guess, because you know you have a room full of kids looking at you. Lena? I remember it was Lena? really weird that fainting time because the first thing I remember when I wake up is blue hands in front of my face. And it took me the longest time to realize that the blue hands were a paramedic. My mother was actually told I wasn't allowed to come back to school until they knew what was wrong with me. Lena Wolf's life had been turned upside down. When paramedics rushed the young freshman to the hospital after she fainted in her biology class, the school told the Wolfs that they did not want Lena back on campus until they could explain what was wrong with their daughter. I was at the emergency room for I think three, three hours or so, and the emergency room said, we don't know why you fainted. So it was kind of like, well, if you can't figure it out, who can? You want answers. You don't want to be referred on to another doctor. You want to know what's going on and you want to know now. I would say that both of my parents really pushed to say that this is something other than her just growing up and going through adolescence. So my uh, doctor sent me to Cleveland Clinic to the syncope lab. I had no idea what the syncope clinic even was or that such a thing existed. When she first came and she presented her history um, obviously, she had these episodes for a while. The main thing first is to listen to the patient. The scenario in which the episodes happened are very, very important for the diagnosis. It seemed more of cardiac origin, circulation origin, and that's why we focused in this direction. They did a whole day of testing to figure out exactly what was going on. I had already had CT scans and MRIs, so they knew that all that was clear. There wasn't anything going on in my brain specifically. At first, we want to know what happens to the blood pressure and the heart rate and what are the symptoms of the patient when the blood pressure and heart rate change one way or the other. So we use the chill test to start with. They start you out laying out flat hook you up to all kinds of different monitors and the test doesn't officially start until you're standing upright and what they're trying to do is see how your heart and your blood pressure and everything reacts when you go from you know sitting or laying down to standing. Sure enough it was positive. I'm like so what does that mean? Our most important next question is what is in the circulation that predisposes the patient to this kind of response. Dr. Fuad performed a series of tests on Lena's sympathetic and vagal nervous systems and measured her blood volume. She wanted to find out what was creating the disturbance in Lena's blood circulation that was causing her to faint. These tests included the Valsalva test and the heart rate variability test. The results finally yielded a diagnosis. And they told us that she had vasovascular syncope, otherwise known as neurally mediated hypotension. And on top of that, she had venous pooling, in addition to she doesn't make enough blood. The mechanism of the vasovagal response is when there is less blood returning to the heart, the heart is unable to produce enough blood for the rest of the body. So the brain sends the sympathetic nervous system to accelerate the beating of the heart. So when the heart is beating fast and strong, 
other types of sensors send other messages to the brain to say the heart is working too hard. So the brain sends the vagal nerve to slow down the heart rate. Now the vagal nerve can slow down the heart rate much too much. And by doing so, the heart rate slows or may sometimes have what we call a pause and the blood pressure drops. So the treatment we gave to Lena was to increase her salt intake, take uh, the proper type of fluid for adequate hydration, and we give her a medication to tone down the vagal nerve. They first put me on uh, Florinif. We thought that this was the best route to take for her, that the right combination of drugs would bring her back to some sort of normality. About every three weeks, they were increasing the dosage, and she was monitored by her family physician as well as by the Cleveland Clinic. Initially, I was you know, positive with what results I got because, I mean, I saw some improvement. I made it through summer school fine, and I was able to go and hang out with friends and didn't seem to have too many problems. The start of my junior year was really hard. I started fainting more, I started getting tired more, I started having more side effects with the other medicine that they would put me on, uh, more headaches. By Thanksgiving of my junior year, I had to pull out of school because I was unable to stand up enough to actually go to school and I started sleeping for about 20 hours a day. There was actually a point where I didn't leave my house for three months because I was just that sick. We were constantly going back to the clinic for them to run other tests. I was down there with her one day. It was a normal follow-up. They ran the EKG. They told us her heart was fine, but that she couldn't miss just one dose of the Flornef. I'm like, why? I mean, she sleeps through most of her medicine. She's not even awake. And um, he explained to me that if she missed even one dose, that she could have a heart attack. It was a terrifying year for young Lena Wolf and her family as a series of fainting spells went undiagnosed. Doctors finally discovered that Lena had a rare condition that caused a dangerous miscommunication between her brain and her heart. Initially, drug treatments helped, but the timing and dosages eventually became so complicated that one missed dose could potentially trigger a heart attack and possibly death. That's no way for a 17-year-old to live. You can't have a heart attack when you're 17. You know, as a parent, you never want to see your child go before you or be sick. That last visit with the cardiologist was really the final straw. And um, I spent the whole weekend on the internet trying to find answers. There weren't books on this at the time. I'm not even sure that you could find a whole lot of books on it right now. Every time I go to a cardiologist, I learn the new name, <laughs> which is very hard because if you don't know the name, what are you looking up? In the back of my mind, I always knew that there had to be something. There had to be something somewhere. It was just that I had to find it, and I just had to look harder till I found it. Cindy Wolf's diligence led to her discovery of a little-known Chinese drug called Vasotec which had shown some promise in patients with neurally mediated hypotension. They had not proven why it worked. They just knew that it was working with patients that had NMH. So I called the family physician and said, look, she's missed her whole year of school. She's only awake for four hours a day. Why can't we try this? He agreed to start taking me off all the current medicines I was on, which took three months. We had to wean her off of all the medicine that she was on because it was such a dangerous process. 
and then after the three months, I was allowed to start the VasoTech. In addition, a coworker recommended to Cindy that they look into a specialized blood testing facility called Your Future Health. Being at their wit's end, the Wolfs decided to give it a try. I have a special love in my heart for Lena Wolf. She basically had a condition called neurally mediated hypotension, and she had to explain that to me because I hadn't heard of neurally mediated hypotension before. In a typical hospital setting, blood is drawn to confirm the presence of a particular condition. Ellie Cullen founded Your Future Health on the principle that many diseases can be prevented by maintaining an optimum blood chemistry. Ellie's clinic conducts preventative blood tests and works with clients through diet and supplements to control those levels. When I first heard that um, YFH can change your life just by changing your diet, I was a little skeptical, but I didn't figure that it could hurt. She gives you a health print where you do a very extensive panel of blood tests. Um, they take about eight or nine vials of your blood and they send it to a lab and they do more testing than generally your doctor can do. Lena is yet another sad example of using broad normal ranges rather than the more optimum and closer range that we use. Um, her scores were all within the normal range, yet she was very, very sick. She tests everything that she can think of and every time she thinks of something new to test, she throws it on there. When YFH evaluated Lena's blood tests, we were able to identify a number of areas that needed improvements, scores that well within the normal range, but not optimum for her. And they were things like her glucose level. She was overproducing insulin. Second, she had red blood cells and hemoglobin that were not optimum and iron scores that were not optimum. And this allowed her again not to have oxygen going to the brain. Her circulatory scores, although they looked excellent, upon further review on the genetic level, we know that they were not good. We discovered that she would need more lecithin and vitamin C and E. Uh, she would also need the fish oil. As uh, we'd say with omega-3 profile test, we knew how very low her EPA fish oil level was, so she would need that as well. And she would need the B vitamins in an effort to dilate the blood vessels and allow this blood to flow as freely as it could to get to the brain. Along with a specific regimen of nutritional supplements, Lena would need to completely restructure her diet. The commitment required was more than simply avoiding a few unhealthy foods. It was a total lifestyle transformation. No pizza, no burgers, no french fries, no pop, no candy. Nothing fun, I guess you would say, at least when you're a teenager, what you'd think was fun. She said that I run on protein. I was getting no energy from the foods I was eating because I was eating way too many carbs and not very good wheat carbs. So she put me on a high protein diet. Foods are every bit as important as supplementation. If your body is one of those that can actually pull nutrients out of your foods, you're going to need far fewer supplements. I really tried to get the whole family on board with the no french fries and the no hamburgers. Um, it was a little hard. It's a harder than what you think. I rarely see families that have that kind of commitment. Usually they eat the candy bar in front of the person who's not allowed to have it. Without that commitment, I don't think Lena would have had the response uh, that she did. My fatigue level started to initially change and I started, you know, having seemed like I had a little bit more energy with consuming the more of the protein. By the time we got to the end of the summer, she was able to go back to school her senior year for ha at least half a day, which was a big improvement. I was elated to finally see her go to prom and there was no way she was going to miss going to prom just to get her out there and let her have some of that socialization and fun that she basically missed her sophomore and junior year because she was so sick. It had been a long, exasperating road for Lena and her family, one fraught with fear. But finally, by staying on top of her blood chemistry, they were able to gain control of Lena's life-threatening nerve condition. Today, Lena has finished four years of college, has a job, 
and a bright future. I went to Ohio State University for um, horticulture and agriculture. Lena has always loved plants. What I really like about gardening and planting is that you take this really little seed and it's so small and it's a whole lot of nothing and it just grows into a huge plant. But it doesn't do that very well if you don't take the time and you know care for it and water it. You have to do the same thing with your body. If you don't give it the right nutrition, you're not gonna grow and be the best that you can be. While the doctors don't feel that Lena will ever be fully cured from neurally mediated hypotension, we do know that the dramatic improvement that she's had in her symptoms with diet and supplementation has helped her to lead a normal life. If it wasn't for her, and changing my diet, I never would have made it back to high school, I never would have graduated, and I definitely would have never made it to college. Let alone, I don't think I'd be sitting here today. I would still be, you know, somewhere in bed. We have a very special place in our hearts for Lena Wolf and for her determination. Because it's so hard for a kid to have to eat special foods. And the determination of her family and the financial commitment that they made they had to test her very frequently in order for us to find which nutrients she needed. It is phenomenal to um, see Lena married and talking about having kids. It's just wonderful to see her blossom into this beautiful young lady that everybody loves. Overall, the prognosis of the vasovagal condition is good, so we always are positive about the outcomes, and we encourage the patient that well, let's work together on it. It is something that you have to deal with for the rest of your life. There is not a cure for it. You just have to learn how to cope and survive with it and do the best you can. Fainting episodes made Lena an outcast at school, and worse yet, doctors couldn't tell her anything except whatever she had might kill her. Finally, by balancing her specific blood chemistry with diet and supplements, Lena was able to control her symptoms of neurally mediated hypotension and now leads the normal life she deserves. To learn more about Lena Wolf's story, go to our website. Join us next time for another remarkable story of personal triumph. I'm Don Wildman for The Incurables.